You forgot one. Unstoppable. <laughs> when I got into it, no one was quite sure about what I was doing, choosing Sonic as uh, my next project, but there was something sweet about it. There was something really kind of touching and lovely about this, you know, adolescent type character that's just coming into his power and enjoying all the wonderful, stupid things that are in our culture and the pop culture and, and uh, you know, just really loving the planet like none of us do anymore. It was such a joy to be a part of the, the film last time and just the journey that the character has taken. Um, yeah, I was over the moon. I get to do action. <laughs> like, I'm like, I feel like an action star. I'm ready to jump, fly, flip, all of it. It was amazing. It was incredible. It was, uh, it was something like as a fan of the franchise and then as someone who was very proud to be a part of the movie and then to be able to voice Sonic, to see people love it and to see people react and like want to see more and watching people when the tales reveal happens. We would go to movie theaters and check it out. It was, it was amazing because you hope that people like it as much as you like it. And then you're watching people really connect with it and feeling like we did it, uh, we, we did the fans like justice. That made me so happy. My reaction to the success of the first film, I mean, for me, it's just pure joy, really. Um, I, I don't know if, I, if I'd say it was a surprise. It was more to see how much people loved it and, and connected with the, with the character of Sonic. Um, and I know with like my generation coming up, it was, it was Sonic on the Sega Genesis. And you know, something that totally escaped me is like my generation now has kids and those kids are introduced to like a new generation of Sonic and, and the cartoons and new games and everything. I was able to be the juxtaposition of that. The old guard, the, the, uh, the people that are taking us down the tubes into a, you know, a virtual world that uh, we can no longer control. You know, I'm Robotnik, I'm, I am the controller. Toggle me. The reason why the game, and I feel like this movie is standing the test of time is because it does speak to those sort of like very basic fundamental things of family, friendship, love, and connectedness, compassion, and fun. Like, it's just fun. We have more characters. We have uh, Tails. Tails was just like a little, a little treat at the end. And now Tails is a character that is uh, with Sonic. And now we have Knuckles, which if you're a fan of Sonic like I was, when that video game came out to introduce Knuckles, it was extraordinary. I even remember, maybe I'm wrong, that there was like a little connecting part to it when you got the game back in the day. But the em even the emblem to me is iconic. It used to, for the video game, it was like a Sonic and a Knuckles, the blue and the red. Um, but the idea that we have these characters to play with and then the action is incredible. It's almost like, they're like, okay, the first movie, the people really enjoy the first movie. You can go go to Jeff Fowler and Toby and Neil. Go nuts now. Go, go. And they took advantage of it, and it's great. And now we have Tails and Knuckles, so it's kind of a... Uh, it feels like it's all been leading to this build, and um, I just loved it. I really loved the second movie. Agent Stone has, uh, has, been, uh, has been pretty depressed. You know, um, Robotnik's gone. He's been gone for about eight months. Stone's trying to keep himself going. He's opened up a coffee shop that is uh, a front for a layer that he has built for Robotnik, built to his exact specifications. Uh, and I think he's just awaiting his return. You know, he knows he's gonna come back. He just doesn't know where he is and when that's gonna be, but he's holding out hope. That was a perfect opportunity for me to, uh, to be that guy again. And I seem to run into those characters quite frequently. You know, the, they're, they're offered to me a lot. The, the ones that are completely mad, uh, the ones that are absolutely self-loathing and compensating for it with uh, some false sense of confidence and superiority. That's, that's my specialty. It's my favorite thing. I feel like uh, I've been super lucky in my career so far to have directors that allow me to play. And improv is how I started out. And you know, they say dance with the one that brung you. And so I absolutely love directors that give me the opportunity to sort of play around and find, you know, the, 
I feel what improv does, it makes you really present because everyone who's looking at you doesn't know what you're going to say and half the time, I don't even know what I'm going to say. <laughs> so it's just like a really special sort of like chemistry when you improvise on, on, but you're improvising within sort of like parameters, right? So you know what the line is supposed to be. So you know what it's trying to achieve. And I think I benefit from also being a writer. And so when I'm looking at a line or I'm given an opportunity to improvise, I can play within the parameters to get you know the mission of that you know specific dialogue across, but then I can just basically paint with whatever colors I want. And so um, sometimes my goal is to make you know I told James I was just like I want to break you. I'm gonna make you laugh. And so surprising and delighting the you know the people I play opposite that also surprises and delights me. And I think that's just more fun for the audience to watch because they're seeing in real time someone reacting to something that they don't know. And that just feels, I don't know, more authentic. We have so many people that love these characters so much. And I think hopefully that's why people, people felt that in the first one and they're gonna feel it even more in the second one. There's Easter eggs everywhere. And I think people watching will love it. But we go to all sorts of places. We, Sonic is able to run over water and go to like, uh, islands that have been lost for eons, so it's exciting. New places, new fun places, and then, uh, then the the uh, knowledge that all these people have coming into it, like a Robotnik that has already been defeated. Now he's really pissed. Sonic was trying to grow up as a kid and be like more of an adult. You know, all these things coming into it. To Stone's uh, surprise and misfortune, uh, Robotnik uh, brings Knuckles to the lair. And uh, I have to deal with the fact that, uh, you know, someone's in competition with me for uh, Robotnik's affection, is, uh, you know, being his right-hand man. Um, I don't like Knuckles. I think he's trying to get in on my game, you know. Uh, I worked really hard, and uh, I don't appreciate him. I'm just going to put that out there. Don't like him. It's bigger than I thought it would be. Uh, it's deeper than I thought it would be. Um, you know, Robotnik just gets bigger and bigger. You know, I, I'm a big visualizer, big uh, uh, affirmation guy, you know? So uh, the joke about the secret in the movie is, is basically my life. <laughs> so so uh, a couple of years ago, I was thinking, eh, I'm, you know, mid fifties and, uh, you know, it'd be nice to kind of settle into some character that is a franchisable character, but that moves and morphs and, and has some place to go. He's not always the same, you know? And uh, what happened was Robotnik, who is constantly becoming more and more of an ego and um, more and more bitter about uh, not somehow being able to control these, these puny minds that always seemed to get the better of him. The way that we had played Sonic at the beginning is he is this kid with a lot of energy and he wants people to like him, but at the beginning he really didn't have anybody. Um, now he has this wonderful family and he has this town that kind of enjoys who he is. Um, and now it's a matter of, like any other kid, he's growing up, he's looking for his identity, he's looking for people that he can hang around with that don't feel like uh, parents. Um, your group of humans. So I think it's really fun to follow it because for people like myself or any other people growing up when you're kids, you're really trying to find like the people you like to have fun with, the people that are creative the way you're creative, that are unique, that are weird, that are silly. Um, and it's Sonic trying to find that for him. We got that in the first movie, just that, that fish out of water, um, trying to find your place in the world. And I think that's something that um, everybody can identify with you know, if not now, at some point in your life, you've, you've experienced that. I've experienced it, you know what I mean? Like, for me, it was more of, of moving around a lot as a kid and, you know, not being really in the, uh, in the popular kids' groups and stuff. I got picked on quite a bit. So it was like a long search of where do I fit in? What's my place in this world? And fortunately, I found acting. And, uh, you know, a story like that really it hits home for me and I think for a lot of people, like I said. Um, you know, I think that's what life is, is, is you try to find your place and hopefully you find, you know, what you're meant to do and what your dreams are and what your passions are and, you know, at least a few people in, in your bubble that are, that are tight and have, uh, have the same values that you do and, and help raise you up. Well, first he's got to get even. You know, every supervillain has to get even to begin with. They all start out with a chip on their shoulder. Some reason they've 
got to use their history of abuse to become the abuser. <laughs> and uh, so vengeance is number one. Uh, number two, of course, total world domination and uh, the enslavement of mankind. Uh, that's, that's one of his, one of his uh, items on the bucket list. We're seeing more of the characters now come to life. You know, we're seeing the war between the characters, you know, that were in the video game. And of course, Robotnik will always be the, you know, monolithic beast of need and hatred. Uh, but, but, you know, it's wonderful to see all the other characters come to life, you know, and the uh, relationship between Tom and Sonic get stronger. In, in this universe where the, all these superhero movies are existing and everything, I like this place, you know. I really like the world this, this Sonic character in, uh, I was going to say inhibits, inhabits. And uh, I really like it. I think it's different and it's innocent and it's it's got all the special effects and all the wow but it's also got this very light thing going on that's that's uh, just kind of sweet and homespun and uh, and uh, the idea you know I sound corny but the idea of families hanging out together and watching the movie and the adults having something that they can take away from it and enjoy my performance as I you know, I'm always saying three things at once. Um, but, you know, that means a lot to me. You know, the first movie came out, uh, had a short stint in the theaters, very successful, but then COVID hit, and, and it was a very important movie to people and families that they could watch together during that time, and I, I love that. that. That makes me really happy. You forgot one. Unstoppable.